A 40-year-old woman is stabbed outside a market. She suffers a transection of her median nerve just as it leaves the brachial plexus. Which of the following features is least likely to ensue? Loss of pronation, loss of flexion at the thumb joint, inability to oppose the thumb, ulnar deviation of the wrist, complete loss of wrist flexion. Give a pause and try to think about the answer. The answer would be complete loss of wrist flexion. Loss of the median nerve will result in loss of function of the flexor muscles. However, flexor carpe ulnaris will still function and produce ulnar deviation and some residual wrist flexion. High median nerve lesion results in complete loss of flexion at the thumb joint. Let's talk about the anatomy of the median nerve. The median nerve is formed by the union of lateral and medial root respectively from the lateral cervical 5, 6 and 7 and medial cervical 8 and thoracic 1 quads of the brachial plexus. The medial root passes anterior to the third part of the axillary artery. The nerve descends lateral to the brachial artery, crosses its medial side, usually passing anterior to the artery. It passes deep to the bicipital aponeurosis and median cubital vein at the it passes between the two head of the pronator teres muscle and run on the deep surface of flexor digitorum superficialis within its facial sheath. Near the wrist, it becomes superficial between the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor carpi radialis, deep to palmaris longus tendon. It passes deep to the flexor retinaculum to enter into the palm, but lies anterior to the long flexor tendon within the carpal tunnel. Branches in the upper arm, there is no branch, although the nerve commonly communicates with the musculocutaneous nerve. In the forearm, the branches are supplied to pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor pollicis longus, flexor digitorum profundus, only the radial half. In the distal forearm, palmar cutaneous branch. In the hand, there is both motor and sensory supply. In the hand, the motor supply goes to lateral to lumbricals, opponent's pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and sensory supplies goes to over the thumb and lateral two and a half fingers. On the palmar aspect, this projects proximally. On the dorsal aspect, only the distal region are innervated with the radial nerve, providing more proximal cutaneous innervation. Now let's talk about the pattern of damage. Damage at the wrist will cause carpal tunnel syndrome. Paralysis and wasting of the thinner eminence muscle and opponent's policies will cause ape hand deformity. Sensory loss to the palmar aspect of lateral radial two and half finger. Damage at the elbow will cause unable to pronate the forearm and weak wrist flexion and also ulnar deviation of the wrist. Anterior interosseous nerve is a branch of median nerve, lives just below the elbow, results in loss of pronation of the forearm and weakness of long flexure of thumb and index finger. If you have liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.